The Great Resignation? Maybe. The Great Reshuffle? For sure. The Industry Recalibration? I, I think so. Let's talk about that a bit today. My name is Chris Joslin, and this is Jaws Bites. Hey everybody, I am your host, Chris Joslin, and this is another edition of Jaws Bites. Welcome back. Today we wanted to kind of recalibrate, if you will, and talk a little bit about a subject we had last week, which was the Great Resignation versus the Great Reshuffle. And now this today, we're going to talk about kind of a, a portion of what I deem recalibration in the industry as a whole. Very important subject and one that I think we'll probably get into over the course of several weeks in little bits and pieces because I think that there is a, not once in a lifetime, I, I hate those kind of platitudes, but a once in a, a couple of decade kind of recalibration that's occurring initiated by the pandemic and the shutdowns and things like that. But oftentimes things that occur from the outside, circumstantial things that we find ourselves involved with will force us into a position where change is not just a desire, but it becomes a requirement. And the industry, I think, has seen that. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today in terms of the international shipments port to port, some of the shifts from West Coast to East Coast, water from the land bridge stuff, all that kind of thing. Uh, there have been a lot of ports built over the course of many years that have addressed these issues, sort of looking to the future. Well, the future is here. We talked in the past with a gentleman down in Mexico that talked about what they were doing with some of the uh, ports and in, in, uh, land bridge infrastructure coming up into North America or crossing over as an alternative to the Panama Canal. Those kinds of things are all going to be on the table as the great calibration continues. So I, I think what I'd like everybody to do is just kind of think to themselves, do you know anyone that is moving not because of some new job opportunity, though that might be a piece of the, the, the puzzle, but they're, they're shifting where they're moving from one place to another in a country simply because the timing seems right. It seems to be a time when they can decide that their inner circle, their life, their progress through life, where they need to go, whatever ladder they're trying to climb, whatever economic decision they're trying to make for those and their loved ones is provided an opportunity for the advancement. I would imagine that most of us know someone. I, I live out here in the West Coast. I know a ton of people that are moving away from the West Coast and they can give a whole bunch of different reasons, but the reasons all come down to a baseline of economics. And I think if you raise your hand out there and we're honest with yourself or honest with me or honest with those around you, hopefully you are, you would discover, you would re be reminded of, of someone, probably a lot of someones that are recalibrating their lives. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, as always, we are sponsored by ilevelogistics.com, coming hopefully across your screen at this very moment. And be part of the conversation, be part of the group, be part, join the community of transportation logistics supply chain professionals that want to learn, want to grow, and want to continually hear um, about what's happening in the industry, how it affects them, and how we can move forward in our careers or our opportunities or entrepreneurialism toward a, uh, a better market position. When last we visited, we were talking specifically about what I termed the great reshuffle instead of the great resignation. And there's a lot of implications going on there. <clears throat> The great resignation has more to do with a person by person moving from business type or industry to another to uh, reflect a conscious effort to upgrade their own personal situations, their own life situations to, as I've said many times, make a life instead of a living. And by doing so, increase their uh, potential for profit and potential of moving up uh, the 
ladder of success, if you will. So that's kind of my definition around the great resignation and some of the reasons why I don't think it's entirely though in small portion uh, created by the pandemic and some of the isolation that goes on, some of the rethinking that people have done in their lives to determine what their next steps will be. But there's a greater, uh, there's a greater view that I want to take a closer look at. I, I spoke a little bit about that in terms of geography, in terms of where people are moving in the country, in the United States right now. Some of those things are motivated by um, you know, some of the things that happened over the course of the last year in terms of mandates versus cities and states, et cetera, that do not have those. And some is dictated, as, as I always run back to um, and use my baseline of logic, it's dictated by economics. And when a group of people or when a community or when a family is looking to increase their status and increase their positioning in the course of the life, whatever stage in life those people are in, they will move to those situations, both geographically and economically, that, that benefit them. Well, the same goes with business. You know, one of the things I was reading earlier today, you know, I'll just read a little bit about it. It's the first time in quite a while that this has happened, but the New York and New Jersey, the, uh, the ports there have, I think for the first time, eclipsed Long Beach to become the second biggest U.S. port behind the Port of Los Angeles with recorded total of nearly 500,000 TEU imports during June of 2021. Now, this is a stellar performance in June. It's almost 50% year-on-year increase. Of course, last year with the the situation, it it's probably looks larger than it actually would have. But it's still a huge increase um, to, you know, almost 400,000 TEUs. It's 29.3% higher than in 2019 as well. So overall, container imports in the United States through the top 10 U.S. container ports in June were up 32% from the same month of 2020. Although more relevant and impressive was the nearly 20% increase on pre-COVID June 2019 throughput. So it's been well documented that the huge hike in imported goods is being driven by the American consumer eager to spend savings from travel and services, et cetera. You don't go out to eat as much. You don't travel as much. So you spend it somewhere. Maybe that's on Amazon. Maybe it's not, but you spend it somewhere. And so the imports and the goods needed to be brought in for those American consumers is what is dictating a lot of this, uh, especially during lockdown. Moreover, there appears to be no sign that the insatiable appetite for this consumer goods, a lot of which are made in China, is subsiding in the coming months. And carriers are reporting, you know, huge bookings still from China to the United States and exceptionally strong forecasting through what is traditionally peak season, which is upcoming very soon. The uh, monthly port throughput analysis uh, based on Blue Alpha Capital we recorded over 2 million TEUs imported through the United States in June, a little over a million of which came through the West Coast. But this represented a year-on-year -year increase of almost 22%. But U.S. East and Gulf Coast container terminals saw a massive 50% uplift. This highlighted an accelerating coastal shift. This is the reshuffle that I'm talking about. And it gives more momentum from West Coast port congestion. That, that's kind of the driver. The initial driver of a lot of these changes, this reshuffle calibrated for the international freight system moving to the East Coast from the West, is that you can get most of the stuff through the Panama Canal now, coming up through the Panama Canal and very much some of the super ships can get through there, go up to Barber's Cut outside of Houston, go up to Savannah, which is a deep port. Now some of the places like New York, New Jersey, we just spoke of. All these places are more attractive because the rates to the West Coast are higher and the congestion is so prevalent there. And from a very logical standpoint, over 70% of the U.S. population is closer to the East Coast than it is to the West. So you're placing stuff closer. 
Now, there's a lot of different dynamics in terms of timing, but when you have congestion slowing everything down, the timing goes out the window. And the important part is getting the consumer their goods in a timely manner on the East Coast. So I don't know if this is going to go away anytime soon. I think there's a recalibration that goes on that is taking into account the fact that a, a lot of what's going export, and there is a slight increase of export year over year, but it's only slight. And, and as I mentioned before, the U.S. population is about 24% West Coast centric, West Coast centric, sort of kind of an uh, oxymoron, but West Coast influenced and about 76% live closer to the East Coast, East Coast ports. So the decisions are made easier by the fact that the line haul transportation costs for moving containers to most Eastern points are t much lower than those of all water vessel moving to the East Coast compared to rail intermodal from the West. So you can do a land bridge, if you will, into the West Coast ports, which are severely congested, high costs from China just to get to the port, chassis shortages, then you can move it steel wheel interchange from the harbor onto one of the railroads and move it to the, the East Coast and have these long delays, or you can just go all water all the way through. And now just uh, I think yesterday or today, I was reading about the Union Pacific shutting down a certain percentage for maybe up to a week of imported 40-foot FEU and TEU containers that would normally move inland to Global 4, which is a Chicago area international ramp, <clears throat> are going to be shut down entirely to try to relieve some of the uh, pressure in the intermodal system within the United States infrastructure. So there's, it's like I've talked about in previous podcasts, there's an accordion effect that, that occurs. It's the same thing you see out on the highway when you're driving on the 405 out here on the West Coast. You see somebody slow down and there's a slowdown behind them. There's a, just a slight lag in doing that. So what ends up happening by the time you get 10, 20 cars behind either what is probably not a, anything more than a rubbernecking kind of situation, you have an entire backup that creates a, a bottleneck on the 405. So that's what's happened in the in in terms of international shipping. So to relieve that pressure, people are shutting down some of the the land bridge mechanisms that the railroad provides, and they're moving more and more freight through the system. Now, this is not going to happen just with international freight. It's going to it's it's happening and will continue to happen within the confines of the uh, highway and rail infrastructures probably intercoastal waterways as well. I haven't looked into that very closely, but there is a snowball effect with all of this. And there's a recalibration. So it's there's a great resignation occurring, possibly not for the reasons as I spoke of last time that a lot of people believe. There's a great reshuffle happening, which is a, a geographic repositioning of where distribution centers are, where manufacturing is being reshored, where international in... Um, Domestic shipping is occurring because of the way network balances have been thrown off and may forever be thrown off. It, all of this is being exacerbated by people shifting geographically where they're even living in the United States. So there's a recalibration that's going on that's going to affect all of us. At the end of the day, my one of my favorite and least favorite terms to say, but at the end of the day, it's going to cost consumers more somehow, shape or another. Money isn't free. Even though sometimes we think our Federal Reserve just prints it to see see what can happen. And, and inflation is definitely, you can see that occurring, whether you believe in it wholeheartedly or half-heartedly. There's definitely a consequence for blowing so much money into a system that is occurring today. But uh, at, filtered down through all of this is you and I at the end of, at the end of the distribution channel, purchasing the items we want to purchase from wherever we want to purchase them and the cost of those goods continue to rise. So we pay for all this recalibration, but it will recalibrate. You can trust me there. It will recalibrate. Things do begin to settle through and, and reorganize themselves in a way that is satisfactory to the needs of a capitalistic society that we have here in the United States. And this port issue is only one of those things. So I, I believe this is going to continue to happen. Uh, there, again, I, as I mentioned earlier, the, the data does show that we've had nearly a 2% year-on-year improvement in lated exports. That means 
exports with, that aren't not going empty. Most goes empty. And that's up to, you know, about 825 uh, thousand TEUs. The, and TEU is 20 foot equivalent units. FEU is 40 foot equivalent units going back on the ships loaded to places like China. Um, however, that's 10% lower than June of 2019. And that, that brings together two opposing forces. You have really high rates coming in to, so they can subsidize outbound empties to get back to the places they're needed. But then there's this accordion effect on the water through the canals, de uh, defraying freight to different ports in the United States to supply the very um, ravenous appetite that U.S. consumers have right now for all kinds of goods. Because in one of the amazing things that's happening on top of this is we've talked about, you know, the transportation, not transportation, the travel industry, the, the, um, the, um, leisure and meals and uh, dining out and all that kind of thing that's been part of our lives for a very, very long time, finally coming back out of the woods and people are getting back into the restaurants and going back out to be with friends and, and family, etc. And even that is being curtailed because people can't hire anybody. There's not, there's so many jobs out there and not enough people to fill them going back to what we talked about a little bit ago in terms of, quote unquote, the great resignation, if you will. So these things all coupled together are going to continue to cause a myriad of issues. You know, how we deal with them is very important, of course, and how it affects our business lives in terms of transportation logistics, where we uh, affect our margins, where we go after, how a great reshuffle occurs in terms of the capacity going to people that they there are agreements to supply capacity and capacity that's going to other entities that are willing to pay more on a short-term transactional basis. So all these things are coming into the, the plans. Most everybody's budgets are out the window. And uh, only time will tell how quickly things will recalibrate, but they certainly will. So I just wanted to take a few minutes and throw some of those that information out there for everyone to digest. And I'm sure that we'll have much more to talk about because this great reshuffle, this great resignation, this great recalibration that's occurring in Australia, they would call it an entire retrench of an entire industry, really, um, is going to continue to affect all of us. So be aware, be on the ball. Be nimble and be ready to adapt uh, and recalibrate as well. As always, everybody, I invite you to join us at the website, www.ilevelogistics.com. Hopefully coming across your screen again and join us for the conversation. Like I said earlier in this, in this podcast, uh, come visit us at the site. Go to YouTube, subscribe on there, watch our podcast, listen to them on any one of the the uh, podcast platforms of your choice. We are on there, Apple, Spotify, wherever you need to, to find us, you will find us. And uh, remark, give us a give us a five-star review. Give us your feedback because we can only get better and we can only learn more from our audience if you participate as well. So thank you again, and we'll see you next time.